In this video, you'll learn best practices for creating classes in PHP, including how to organize them in separate files, and how to load them automatically using a standard called PSR4. Let's start with this code. In this PHP file, we're defining a class called user. This contains one public method called getName, which returns a string. After that, in the same file, we're creating an object of that class and calling the getName method on it, using echo to output the return value from the method. If I run that code by opening it in a browser, it works, and the value returned by the method is printed out. While this does work, defining a class and then using it in the same file is not a good idea. What happens if you want to use this class elsewhere? If you include this file in another one, you'll also end up running this code below the class definition. So first, let's put the class definition in a different file. So let's start by creating a file called userclass.php, and we'll begin this file with the PHP opening tag. Then, let's cut the class definition out of the index.php script, and paste it in the new file. Then, back in index.php, to include the code from the new file, let's add a require statement, passing in the name of that file. If I run this, it still works as before. Let's add another class. So let's add a new file and call it productModel.class.php. Note I'm using a different way of naming this class file. Instead of underscore class.php, this time I'm using a dot class.php suffix. In here, let's add a simple class definition for a class called product model, along with a simple example method. Then, back in the index file, as with the user class, if we want to use this class, we need to require the file it's in. Once we've done this, we can create an object of this class and call methods on it. If I run this, then it works with no problems, calling the getID method on the product model object and outputting its return value. However, every time you need to use a class that's defined in a separate file, you need to load it with a require statement like this. If your application has a lot of scripts or a lot of classes, this will very quickly get unmaintainable. Instead of requiring each individual class file like this, we can do it automatically. So let's remove these require lines. Now when we run this, as expected we get an error. The user class wasn't found. So how do we load these files automatically? One way to do it is to use the SPL autoload register function. This registers a function that will be called when a class isn't found. So let's add this function at the top of the script. The function takes a function as its argument, so let's pass in an anonymous function. The argument to this function is a string containing the class name. Inside this function, for now, let's just output the value of this argument. Now when we run this, we still get the same error, but before that, we get the name of the class we're trying to create an object of, in this case, user. So before PHP tries to use the user class, it calls the autoload function, passing in the name of the class. To demonstrate this further, let's comment out the code that uses the user class. Now the string that's printed out is the name of the product model class. So how can we use this to load the class files automatically? At the moment, the file names for these classes don't match the class names. However, if we changed them so that they do, then we could deduce the file name from the class name. Before we do that, let's have a look at a standard we should use for the name of a class. There are several PHP standards for different aspects of developing in PHP. These are known as PSRs, or PHP Standards Recommendations. PSR1 is the basic coding standard. Among other things, this says that class names must be declared in studly caps. Studly caps, also known as Pascal case, is where the first letter of each word is capitalized. So for class names that contain multiple words, each word would start with a capital letter. For example, all of these would be valid class names using this standard. The standard also recommends that each class should be in a file by itself, which we did earlier. 
So let's rename the product model class to use Studly Caps, and also rename the file it's in so it matches the class name, with just a .php suffix at the end. Note that we have to match the file name to the class name exactly, respecting the uppercase and lowercase letters. Let's do the same in the user class. Rename the class itself, and change the file name. Then, back in the index script, let's change the names of the classes where we're using them. We'll leave the user class code commented out for now. Now when we run this, the class name printed out by the autoloader is the product model class. As the class name matches the file name now however, we can build a string to require this file. So in the autoloader, let's add a require statement, creating the file name by adding the .php suffix to the class name. Now when we run this, the error has gone, and we get the output from running the method on the product model object, which means the product model class has been loaded successfully. Let's uncomment the code that creates a user object and calls a method on it. And this works for the user class as well. So every time a class is referred to that hasn't been defined yet, the autoload function is executed, which requires the file that contains the class definition. In addition to recommending each class is in a file by itself, the PSR1 standard also says each class should be in a namespace of at least one level. So in the user class, let's add a namespace of app. Note that namespace names follow the same Studly Caps naming standard as class names. Likewise, in the product model class, let's add a namespace, but this time two levels, database, and inside that, models. In the index file, now that these classes are in namespaces, we need to add those when using the classes. Now if we run this though, we get an error. Specifically, a file not found error. The require statement is trying to load the file app slash user.php. Note that before this, we get app slash user printed out. So the class name the autoload function receives is the fully qualified class name, including any namespaces. So we just broke the autoloader by adding namespaces to our classes. So how do we fix it? The PSR4 standard defines a specification for autoloading classes from file paths. This basically says that namespaces should correspond to subdirectories, matching the name of the namespace to the name of the subdirectory, including the case. It also says that the class name should match the file name exactly, with just .php at the end, which is something we've already done when we renamed the files earlier. So following the PSR4 standard, the user class file should be in a folder called app, and the product model class should be in a folder called models, which is inside a folder called database. So let's create a folder called app and move the user class into it. Let's create another folder called database and another folder inside that called models and move the product model class into that. Before we continue, there's another change we should make. Instead of having all these folders that contain PHP classes in the root of your application, it will be better to put them inside a folder specifically for PHP source code. It's common practice for such a folder to be named SRC, short for source. This is standard behavior for PHP packages and is what frameworks like Symfony do, for example. So let's create a source folder and move both the app and database folders into that folder. Running this, we still get an error as we haven't changed the autoload function yet. Now we know the namespace is included in the value passed to the autoloader though, we can use this to work out the directory. So the value we get in this class argument is the fully qualified class name. As the namespaces match folders, and the class name matches the file name, all we need to do to get the path to the class file is convert this value to a path. The namespace separator character is a backslash. While this is also the directory separator on Windows, on other operating systems it isn't. Instead, it's a forward slash. The forward slash will also work on Windows, so in order to create a path that will work on all operating systems, we need to convert backslashes in the class name to forward slashes. 
So in the autoload function, let's create a path variable and use the string replace function to replace any backslash characters with a forward slash. Note that we have to put two backslash characters in order to match a single backslash. The backslash is an escape character, so normally a single backslash has special meaning. Putting two like this will just match any single literal backslash character. As we're doing below, let's also append the .php extension to the end of the path variable. Then, instead of printing out the class, let's output the path variable. Running this, we still get the error, but now we get a valid path to the class file. The only thing we need to add is the source folder. Let's do that at the start of the path variable. Note that if you have a different folder structure, such as the index.php script in a public folder, then you might need to adjust this relative path. For the purposes of this video, I'll keep it simple and just leave it like that. Now when we run it, we get the full relative path. All we need to do now is change the require statement to use this path variable. Let's run this again, and now the errors have gone, which means the class files are being loaded successfully. We get the paths to the classes printed out, and the output from calling the methods. Now we no longer need it, we can remove this var dump line from inside the autoloader. To further show how this works, let's add a new class. Let's add a new folder to the source folder called Framework. Inside here, a new file called router.php. Inside this file, we'll add the PHP opening tag, a namespace that matches the folder it's in, and the class definition whose name matches the file name. Then, back in the index script, before we create an object of this class, let's input the class into the current namespace with a U statement at the top. This is just to demonstrate that the autoloader will still include the namespace. Then at the end, let's create an object of that class. As we've added the U statement, we don't need to include the namespace when we refer to the class. After this, let's use the getClass function to get the class of this object, and let's print it out. When we run this, we don't get any errors, meaning the class has been loaded automatically. And we get the class name with its namespace printed out. An alternative to defining your own autoload function is to use Composer. I covered the basics of Composer, including how to install it and how to use it to install third-party packages in another video. There's a link to this in the description. In addition to using Composer to install and manage third-party packages, you can also use it to autoload your own classes. To do this, we need to tell Composer where to load our class files from. We do this in the composer.json file. If you've already installed some third-party packages, you'll already have this file. If not, like here, you can just create one. So let's create a new file in the root of the application and call it composer.json. In here, as this is JSON, we'll add a JSON object literal, which is just two curly braces. Then let's add an autoload key and another object for its value. Inside here, another object with a key that specifies we're going to use the PSR4 standard to autoload our classes. Note that if you're adding this to an existing composer.json file that has a require section, then you can just add this below it at the same level. Inside here, we add key value pairs that specify namespaces and the folder where they can be loaded from. For example, let's add the app namespace. We have to follow the namespace with two backslashes. This is so that only this namespace will be matched, and another namespace that starts with the same string isn't matched. Then we tell Composer where to find the classes in this namespace. So in this case, they're in the source app folder. You don't have to include a trailing slash, but it's common practice to do so. For now, let's just specify the app namespace. Next, we have to generate the autoload script itself. We do this on the command line with the dump autoload command. This has created a vendor folder and inside there, a file called autoload.php. This is Composer's autoloader. Note that this is a generated file, so you'll never need to edit this file directly. So to use this, we just need to require it. So back in the index file, let's comment out the autoloader we added earlier, and require Composer's autoloader. 
Let's run this, and we get an error that the product model class wasn't found. However, the output from calling the method on the user class is there, so the user class has been loaded successfully. The user class is in the app namespace, so that namespace has been specified correctly in the composer.json file. Let's add the other two top level namespaces that we're using database and framework. When we run this though, we get the same error. This is because whenever you change the autoload configuration in the composer.json file, you need to run the composer dump autoload command again to regenerate the autoload script. Now when we run this, it works as before. As our classes are all in folders that match the namespaces inside the source folder, we can reduce these three lines to just one, not specifying a namespace at all. This is basically a catch-all that says load any class in any namespace from the source folder. Let's regenerate the autoload script again on the command line. And when we run this, it still works as before. Note that you only have to regenerate the autoload script if you change the autoload configuration in the composer.json file. If you add a new class that's covered by that configuration, then that will be loaded automatically by the existing autoloader. For example, let's add a new file to the database models folder called ordermodel.php. We'll add the PHP opening tag, the namespace to match the folders, and the class definition to match the file name. Then in the index file at the end, let's create an object of that class, and as above, use the getClass function to print out the class name of the object. Without regenerating Composer's autoload script, when we run this, it works, printing out the class of the object we just successfully created. So when you want to autoload class files using the PSR4 standard, make sure you put each class in its own file, with the file name matching the class name. Namespaces must match the folder name, and for both namespaces and class names, we use studly caps. To load these automatically, you can either define your own autoloader, or configure and use the one provided by Composer. It's up to you. There's a link to all the source code shown in this video in the description, along with links to sites shown and other relevant videos. If you found this useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Many thanks to my supporters on Ko-Fi, and as always, thank you for watching.